Oh, hey, hey. Uh, today I'm going to show you our procedure for calculating the friction coefficient, also known as mu, for two surfaces and two objects. But friction is a lie. <laughs> anyway. Friction is for losers. <laughs> as we already seen, uh, an inclined plane has both x and y components when only gravity is acting on the object. We also know that friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. Now, as we can all remember, the acceleration of the movement over the surface is equal to the weight on the x axis. This count also this. Ah, so I would say we can substitute the normal force for the weight on the y axis, that means mass times gravity times the cosine of theta. Now, at theta, we know that. Can I ask a question? Um, no, I won't behave, I swear. We're talking about static friction force. So, the object is moving, which means that the acceleration is static, right? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry! Okay, so the friction force is equal to the descending force of gravity on the x-axis. So we can assume that the weight in x is equal to the static force. Now, if we substitute that in terms of mass, weight, and cosine and sine, we can see that mu times the cosine of theta. And mu? You mean a cow? There's a cow here. I want to be a cow! I want a cow! I want a cow. And you give me some milk? We want to isolate mu, and what we have to do is divide sine over cosine. As we can see, the mg components cancel out. So we are left with mu equals sine over cosine, also known as a tangent. We're going to talk about kinetic friction. Remember that kinetic friction, in kinetic friction, the acceleration downward will always be bigger, or really any form will be bigger than the So for this, we're going to need a symmetry of force to the x axis. Now, you ask why the x axis? Because the movement is only going through the surface, it's not going below the surface. So we have the weight in the y axis is mg times the sine of theta minus our friction force equal to sine mass acceleration. But where is the acceleration? I can't see the acceleration. Why okay. is the acceleration? Okay. Okay. In this particular case, we are able to measure both time and distance and that can get it below the surface. With velocity, we can get acceleration dividing by the same time that it took the object to move from top to bottom. Wow! So, oh, here? Oh, please. Here. Bang! Now, we're going to isolate the friction force. And with that, we have the weight in x minus minus of the normal rate. Remember that friction is equal to mu times the normal force. We isolate mu and we get weight in x minus mass times acceleration over number Why are you so red? Is something wrong with you? I mean, I haven't seen anyone. Oh, me, no. oh my god, he's from the devil. He's red and he's from the devil. Oh my. Help. It's a hell boy. It's a hell boy. Can I do an autograph? Yeah. Oh yes, please. Sorry. And remember, your friction coefficient must always be larger for static friction than kinetic friction. If it does not, something's wrong. And there is a rule for the mu or something? The static friction coefficient is of 0 0.5064 and the kinetic friction one is 0 0.3762. The coin has a mass of 10.3 grams and an acceleration of 0.74 meters per square second. The angle is of 26.86 degrees. Time is 0.97 seconds, the distance is 38 centimeters and the mass of the USB is 8 grams and the angle is 16 degrees. 
the resulting of kinetic friction is equal to 0 0.244 and the resulting for static friction is equal to 0 0.286